Hey everybody, welcome back to Slavic Saturday, where we talk about Slavic mythology, history, and folklore. My name is Brendan Noble, author of the Frostmark Chronicles, which is my fantasy series based on Slavic mythology. This week we're returning to gods in Slavic mythology with a god of the winds, which is Strebog. Before we dive too far into Strebog, I just wanted to remind you if you're interested in the first book in that series of Frostmark Chronicles, the first book being A Dagger on the Winds, the, we are approaching the cover reveal of the book in May, and if you'd like to be the first to receive early excerpts of the book, as well as being the first to see that cover reveal, you can subscribe to my newsletter down below. It gets sent out once a month and won't spam your inbox. But now, let's dive into more about Strebog. So for an agricultural society, especially as the early Slavs were, the winds and storms and rain are all very important things towards the crops and just the way of life in general. Now this makes Strebog a very important god as the bringer of these storms, whether good or destructive. And these winds connect him as well to Perun, who is a god of thunder, justice, and war in Slavic mythology. And because Perun having the storms and Strebog bringing the storms are inherently attached. He kind of acts a little bit like a right-hand man to Perun in some interpretations, as the gales and the gusts that come with the storm can be often more destructive than the thunder or floods or things that can come from too much rain or the lightning. That being said, like Perun's ability to both be positive in his role as well as negative and destructive, Strebog also has the same thing. His winds can bring very nice rain and things that can be helpful to the people of who are growing their crops or just life in general, but it can also bring destructive storms. And this comes across as Strebog is considered the grandfather of the eight winds. I never really talks about his children specifically in mythology, nor are the eight winds actually really named. They're named in some sources that are very, very not trustable in my opinion, so I'm not going to go off of those names. But regardless, these eight winds kind of show the different personalities that Strebog brings with him. And these different grandchildren, potentially, some of them are known as coming from the west, is the western winds tends to be the friendly and kind wind, the northern wind tends to be more aggressive and unpredictable, and so on and so forth, which each of the directions having their own personalities. And this kind of gives Strebog an interesting role where he's both the god of the winds, but he's more like a caretaker or caller of the wind. Kind of like a role that like Svarog plays compared to Perun, where Perun has the more direct control over the sky, while Svarog might have a little bit more of a passive, distant role. And this is kind of how Strebog has his impact, but the direct influence of the winds themselves are the eight winds and the eight grandchildren. That being said, it is Strebog who had a large cult and a large following and a huge name presence compared to the grandchildren who we really don't have a substantial names for. So this kind of interesting dichotomy comes across still with Strebog with this aspect of good winds and then bad winds as well with the seasons. And cycles in the, of the seasons in Slavic mythology are very powerful. We have Marzana, who is the goddess of winter, who clashes with her siblings who range the Panana regions. It can be some of them are a mix of the ones such as Urillo or Jerovit, who is a god of agriculture, spring, and war. Uh, Dijavana, who's the goddess of the wilds and the hunt in spring. Also Vesna or Zivia, depending on the region, who are also goddesses of spring and fertility. So around the spring equinox, when Marzana's control is thought to be ending, Strebog carries the spring gods, or whatever mix of them we're talking about, depending on the region, to Marzana for them to kill her, and thus bringing spring into life. And this would make Strebog seem like a positive aspect, because he's bringing about the spring that is allows planting and for life to continue on. But he does the same thing in autumn, bringing Marzana to Yorillo, or the, the, whichever other gods we're talking about, to get her revenge in the autumn. So he has the positive aspect of helping bring spring, but he can also bring autumn and winter around as well, which is a kind of interesting contrast that this Strebog plays where he has positive and negative aspects. And this is kind of why a lot of gods appear in Slavic mythology like this, where they have 
a worship element to them for the good they do, but also a fear element because they can be destructive as well. So Streebog's appearance is pretty simple. He typically appears as an old man with a beard and long hair, either gray or white, kind of try to probably represent the clouds. His ro he longs, wears long robes of typically white and carries a, most importantly, a horn that is usually pretty large, and this is meant to symbolize him blowing into the horn to call the winds that are his grandchildren. And in other one pictures, though, it's shown that he is blowing the winds from his own mouth instead. So in my own stories, The Frostmark Chronicles, if you haven't noticed, the name of the first book is A Dagger in the Winds, so the winds are going to have an important role to play, both in the first book and the series in general, specifically with one of the main character's powers. Strebog is a little bit more remote in the books, similar to Svarog and some of the others, because he doesn't have as much of a direct control over the winds, but we do get to see some of his grandchildren, who are interested in the the roles and the power that is happening that is around the winds and the fights that are occurring with it because that's manipulating their power and they don't like that and because of the conflicts and the escalating conflicts throughout the series Streebog will appear eventually later in the books but again he is playing this little bit more of the elder role versus his grandchildren who are having the major impact directly on the wind that they are controlling directionally and that's all I have for you today on this Slavic Saturday video. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe down below. I come out with these videos every Saturday. And if you're still interested in that series, please remember to subscribe to my newsletter as well. But until then, I will look forward to seeing you guys next Saturday.